Hi, my name is Reg Kuhn, and I'm going to just chat to you a bit today on the life of a believer who doesn't walk in godliness. In other words, you allow the flesh to take over, you start walking in the flesh. I want to first and foremost look at the life of Lot. And in the second epistle of Peter, chapter 2, I'll read from verse, um, verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making an example of those who afterward would live ungodly, and delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Verse 9, And the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment. And especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. It is so easy for a believer when you hang out with certain types of people and you, you mix with them every day to start becoming like them. Now the Lord Jesus Christ shows us the example. He would go before the Father and after he'd been empowered as he's gone before the Father, he would go out in the world and he would minister to people in the world. The problem is many times we want to be so politically correct that we hang out with certain types all the time. Now, I don't want you misunderstanding me. It is good to be in the world because that is what we're called to do. We're called to make a difference and to be different. You see, making a difference is one thing, but being different is even better because we're in the world but not of the world. If you allow the world to suck you in and you start acting like them, they will never see the difference in you. You don't have to be a religious nut uh, or a Bible basher, as they so commonly say, but you can stand out just by being different. And many times your life then becomes an epistle to those who would never go to a church. By the way you lead your life and the way you act out in public, people will see the difference in you. Lot became so swallowed in by Sodom that he vexed his righteous soul, the scripture says. He tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. But he became so comfortable. He wanted easy street. When Abraham gave him the choice one way or another, he chose what he thought was nicer, what was more convenient, closer to the, the, the limelight, close to Sodom and Gomorrah. Uh, he thought he chose... For him it was that he chose the better thing. But eventually he was so exposed to this that he started vexing him. It started tormenting him. And uh, if we turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 1, it says, Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. There is a process. The blessing of God is for the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. And the thing is, sometimes when you hang out with the ungodly so much, they start rubbing off on you. When God wants you to stand out and be, a, be different and make a difference, you instead start becoming like them. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. You see the, the progression. You walk in their counsel, their understanding, their way of doing things, because many times they will tell you that you are not with the times, you are not... Uh, politically correct and they want to tell you how to live but our standard is still the word of God God's standard hasn't changed and God loves the sinner but he hates the sin God is a God of love 
God doesn't just contain love, but God is love. But love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. So God wants us to be different and to stand out. You do not walk, you see. First and foremost, we see a walking. In the council, remember the council is the thought patterns, the ideas, the, uh, the, the ungodliest way of doing things in their council. Nor stands in the paths of sinners. You become so comfortable being in that type of company that you start hanging out now. You, you don't just walk by anymore. You're so drawn in by it. You become comfortable and you start hanging out, start having a good time with them. And then it goes to the next progression where you're so comfortable that you sit in the seat of the scornful. And many believers are challenged. You don't want to look prudish. You don't want to look like you're not cool enough. Let's use the terms that the young folk use these days. You don't want to be seen as someone who's not cool. So whatever dirty jokes they tell, you laugh at it and, and you act like you just, you, you become a submarine Christian. You know, blub, 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 you're undercover for Jesus. And you, you find that you don't make a difference anymore. People can't tell the difference between you and the ones that you're supposed to minister to, the ones that you're supposed to teach. The scripture says, if you want to walk in the blessings, you see, you can't walk in the counsel of the, the ungodly. You can't stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Again, there's another progression. The ungodly, sinners, scornful. You start taking on that type of character. Your nature becomes one. Though you're a believer, you love God with all your heart, you start acting like somebody who's ungodly. You start acting and sin. You, you're comfortable with sin. And next thing, you become scornful. And whatever they say then, remember, the devil always tries to sneak in seeds, the wrong type of seeds in our hearts. And before you know it, you start acting like them. You become scornful, disdainful about the things of God because you're comfortable with sin. The scripture says in verse 3, Psalms 1 verse 3, verse 2, sorry. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever it does shall prosper. You see, there is a promise for somebody who leads a godly life. As you delight yourself in the laws, the precepts, the statutes, the, uh, the holy word of God, and as you meditate in it, the Word of God says that fruitfulness will come to you. Because as you allow the seeds of God's Word to produce within you life, that life will start flowing out from you. And it will bring forth fruit in its season. Your leaf will not wither. You will always have nourishment. You will always have strength. And you will experience one breakthrough after another. You will walk in tremendous strength. And, but he has a promise in this uh, psalm for the ungodly as well. In verses 4 and 5 it says, The ungodly are not so, but are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. You see? There is an end for those who walk ungodly. There is an end for those who do not do it God's way. And then in verse 6 it says, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. In other words, there's an intimate understanding. God knows the righteous intimately. And God knows what the righteous are like. The Lord knows the way of the righteous. And God has good plans for them. For I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future, an expected outcome. And it finishes with this. But the way of the ungodly shall perish. So my challenge to us as believers, it's easy to become like Lot. It's easy to become comfortable with sin. 
and you're constantly tormenting your own heart, but you're afraid that if you're not cool enough, you'll be rejected. You're afraid that if you, if you don't listen and laugh at their jokes, that you'll be seen as a prude. My challenge to you as a believer, my brother, my sister, is stand out, dare to be different. If you dare to be different and start doing things differently, your life will then convict others. Remember, it was St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel and if necessary, use words. So you don't need to use words. Let your lifestyle be different. Do not allow that tormenting to come to your soul where you're constantly engaging with the ungodly and instead of going to the Father and receiving nourishment and strength, you keep just engaging and hanging out with the ungodly. There is power, there's a tremendous power in believers getting together. The scripture says, for where we dwell together in unity, God commands a blessing. It's not a maybe, it's a command. God commands a blessing. And the word also says, do not forsake the gathering together of the saints. And I know many times people these days say, no, the Holy Spirit will teach me. I can just hang out alone on my own. No, you're foolish. There is a tremendous power in believers getting together and hanging out together. And you, you, you get together, you pray together, you seek God together, you spend time with the Lord, you go out and you make a difference. Don't let your life be ruined. Don't let your soul be so tormented because you want to be politically correct. I'm not very politically correct. Friends, I choose to be biblically correct. I'd rather believe the word of God than the word of man. And I leave you with this. You're going to choose the easy way out, easy street, or you're going to choose it to do it the way of God. I want to pray for everyone listening to this broadcast that you would not be so concerned about people, that you would move away from being a people pleaser to being a God pleaser. Let your life reflect true godliness. Let your life reflect holiness. Let your life reflect the ways of God. Instead of trying to please men, choose to please God first and foremost. And as you please God, let that anointing, when you come into a situation, you will make a difference in so many lives. I, uh, a young lady spoke to me a few days ago and she said, Reverend, you know what? You've made a difference in my life. And in the process, you touched my family, my sister's lives. And in the process, you're touching my family's lives. Because I saw a difference in you. And the challenge for every one of us as believers, dare to be different. I don't think it was easy for Daniel to be different but he chose to be different. And by choosing to do it God's way, God propelled him into his destiny. He reached the pinnacles of success. And he was a life that every one of us remember. And Daniel is known as a prophet in the Bible. But yet, Daniel was not in church. Daniel was in the workplace. Daniel made a difference in his place of work every day. And you know what helped Daniel? Was that in the times that he spent with his God to prepare him and to empower him for the times he had to spend with the world. God bless you.